So tell us a little bit, you have multiple companies, you've got to probably have a million things you're dealing with, with people that need your support, your leadership, or maybe you've got to lay them off or you've got to pay them and they're not working. So tell us a little bit what's going on in your world. Sure. The first thing um, is economic, right? So cash is king, cash is oxygen, cash is the lifeblood of your life economically, your business world. So the first thing that we all have to do is shut down any non-essential expenses. Uh, in, in that vein, we, my team and I have been calling every bank, every landlord, asking for a reduction in interest rate, asking for a reduction in rent, asking for uh, interest only. Um, we've had really good responses. I would say 60% or so have been positive. Um, you know, there's been some that have ducked us in different things and head in the sand. But so that was the first move. That's the biggest expense item we can affect right off the bat. Uh, secondly, is looking across the board at salaries and employees and trying to keep that going. We're lucky because we've been prudent that we're in a pretty good cash position. So we're not in a rush to do any layoffs. And we may try to not do any but we have uh, got to have some contingency plans for that. I'm not quite sure what the impact is going to be from a revenue point of view. Um, I suspect bad, <laughs> but I don't know yet because February was a good month. So we got our numbers in, you know, for February and there was no glitches there. Obviously I saw this coming a little bit. I, I tend to, I'm an internet guy. I like to look at sort of conspiracy theory websites, not because they're accurate. They're not, they're usually full of it, but they also, tend to grasp anything they can see out there. So I had some forethought and foresight into this going down. And because of that, I personally accumulated some cash, some gold, some guns, some weapons, uh, some bullets. <laughs> I, ha I had all that, but I just kind of made sure I had it. And then food. So we've got, a, we've got a plenty of food. It may not be the most tasteful food in the world, but we have a 25 pound bag of rice. And we have, I went ahead and pulled the trigger about, um, about three weeks ago, I guess, on one of those $2,500, six months worth of like, you know, rations. So I'm not worried about food. You went Robert Kiyosaki on me. Yeah. 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 What is, what does he say? <laughs> Grub, guns, gold. I didn't, I didn't buy a lot of gold. I'm not, I'm not sure what to do with it. Rock. What am I supposed to walk in with a gold Eagle and say, Hey, I'd like yeah, some water. Here's exactly. my $1,000 gold Eagle. <laughs> um, but I was a little prepared. I tried to short the market on the Sunday before I emailed my two uh, smart MBA guys that work for me and said, hey, how do I want to aggressively short the market? But Monday it opened, it opened down. Now, I am not a stock market guy, to be clear right. to everyone. What I didn't realize is I could have still shorted the market yeah. on Monday and I'd have yeah. still made a killing, but I thought I'd missed the window. Um, and then it just went down and down and down. Um, but yeah, so call, looking at all non-essential expenses, cutting the cord on cable. The only thing I'm being softer on is people for obvious reasons. If you, you know, if you want to try to take care of people for as long as possible, but it sounds like the federal government and the state governments are stepping up as well. So if you are laying people off, they should be able to pick up unemployment very quickly. Um, and it sounds like they're going to extend the amount of time you get to receive that compensation. And just keep in mind, if you own a business, like let's say it's a restaurant and you have 10 employees and you're not have no revenue. If you immediately lay them off and they're able to get unemployment and then the business does come back in 90 days, you can, you'll still have some operating cash to bring them back. If you pay everybody for 90 days and you go to negative yourself, you can't reopen. You know, when you, when a restaurant reopens, they got to buy all new food, all new supplies, everything they had is no longer good. Um, and so they're going to need some operating capital. And like I said, operating capital is the oxygen of your life and of your business. My daughter had not signed a lease, but had verbally agreed to take on a $700 a month space. And I just said, you got to cancel that deal. You know, it's a, a, a contracts are only in writing for real estate for obvious reasons. And you're, she has a VRBO duplex and without the income from her duplex, she's, she can't afford her payment on her mortgage, right? So that was, and that's gone to zero, like her entire VRBO income that was full and making about 1800 a month for her has gone to zero. So now she's got picked up 1800 a month in expenses. She can't afford a $700 a month rent. The, uh, the other lady didn't take it well, but hey, that's, it's big boy stuff, man. This is when you do all your learning and you really get wise on what's real and what's work, what works. And, and, and personally, I'm grateful for everything I sold. I sold a business and two uh, mortgage uh, real estate plays in the last 90 to 180 days. Um, and I am um, 
I, there's, I wish I'd sold some other stuff and every deal that I'm underwriting right now is on 60 day pause. And I've got, I'm on the other side. I'm a seller on one that just, they just paused on me. It's just natural. It's, this is a time to be prudent, be aware, look around and uh, really take stock of your personal financial situation followed by your business financial situation. And then know that yesterday's prices are all off the board. I was one of our guys, you know, who we both love, Kush, was on a, has a deal and he's on the call with me the other day. And he's like, man, I, it's the best deal I found in forever. And I'm really excited we have it under contract. I said, Kush, everything you're saying was five days ago. Nothing <laughs> is a good deal now that you have under contract. And I'm not trying to be negative. It's, I certainly don't want to discourage people that have worked hard to find a property and put it under contract. But if you're a buyer right now, prices just went down. The stock market is simply a reflection of the future six months from now. The stock market is always ahead of everything. Um, will it be a V? Will it be a U? I don't know, but I do know that right now reality changed in the fastest it's ever changed in my lifetime. And everything you're under contract for right now is based on yesterday's prices that no longer exist. Yeah. And coping with that emotionally, I think is the part that's really difficult for people is wham in one direction, unemployment, stay home completely. I mean, I don't know about you, but I just miss going to my yoga class and, yeah. and seeing people and being in an environment with give and take or walking into a restaurant and having a meal. I don't even really socialize with people, but just being around the energy. So when you take all that into consideration, how are you, first of all, you and your family, what are you guys doing? Are you all locked up in the house? Are you interacting with neighbors? What are you doing? Yeah, we're, so we're locked in. Uh, the only thing my wife and I are doing is they haven't closed the golf course yet, Rock. So we're still golfing and um, it's got a lot of space. Uh, we are riding the cart, but we're rolling up with our uh, Clorox wipes and we say, don't touch our bags, go away. Thank you very much. <laughs> And then we wipe down where they would have touched anything. We hop on, we play our 18 holes. We don't get close to anybody. And then when we get back, I always leave, I'm tipping really well. So every, the cart girl will drive by. I'm like, I don't want anything, but here's 20 bucks or here's 50 bucks. Cause I know they're not getting tipped and that everything is down right now. Right. When I get out of my cart, I leave cash on the cart, but it's the same thing. Don't want any help. Don't come near me. Don't touch my bags. I, right. I, uh, here's 20 bucks. I've left it on the golf cart for you. Thanks so much for doing nothing. Leave me um, alone money. Leave me alone money. And then socially, we are walking through the neighborhood with our other neighbors, but we're all staying six to 10 feet apart. We're lucky enough to have several friends. And by the way, this is the first community I've ever lived in where I had friends. I usually am kind of an island under myself, but I'm lucky enough to have four couples here in the hood with uh, 10 kids between us. We're not bringing the kids out just because we don't think they would understand and they'd be more tempted to come together. Although my daughter did ride her bike with one of the other kids a couple of days ago. Um, we are playing a lot of games. Bella's in volleyball and tennis and we have this tennis ball you can hit off of like a weighted water weight. So we've been doing that. We've been bouncing the volleyball back and forth. My son is in the cars and making weird soup concoctions. Weirdly enough, my son's sick right now, Rock. So he's got a 103 degree fever. He's got an ear ache, something I've had with my oldest daughter a bunch of times, right? Like normal fever, congestion, earache, um, but it, it feels more ominous, you know, currently. Yes. Obviously, I, I'm, the last thing I'm going to do is go to the hospital. Uh, it's the, I do know a couple of doctors. I've been in touch with them, and uh, we're just going to ride it out. We've ridden it out before with Bella. She had earaches around this age. Um, the chance of it being coronavirus, I guess you have to think about that, but, you know, I think it's almost we've – been, we've been isolated for eight days. So is it possible? Yeah. Is it likely? Extremely unlikely. We're like yeah. – like Phoenix, where you are, we're very low on, are you in Phoenix? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're pretty low on the infected scale. Yeah, we have something like 39 people or something like that. But then again, that, those are the people that have self-identified. I'm, I'm sure there's a, a bunch of people that are not identified yet. Which will... uh, Thank you, Joseph. I see someone said garlic oil with golden seal oil is good for earache. We've used garlic mulin oil before. I don't know what golden seal is, but I know we've used garlic. Yeah, that'd be great, Joseph. Thanks, bud. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not too worried, dude. I don't live in a lot of fear. I've been through a lot of downturns, two wars, at least three depressions or recessions or what have you. Probably never a depression, but three recessions. I remember in Gulf War One when I was in real estate, everybody stopped doing everything to watch all that stuff in 2001 yeah. on TV. Um, 
Yeah. Was that 2001? Jeez, it's hard to keep up. I, I remember the big crash of, of 2008 and how that felt. I had a lot more overhead then and a lot less revenue. Uh, actually, I have more overhead now. Um, you know, and we're looking at the very real possibility of with a million a month in overhead, our revenue going to zero. Um, but again, we're just mitigating all that. Like, so if I look at that million a month um, and I break it down, a lot of it is taxes and bonuses. So that's obviously not real costs. That goes away with no revenue. So that brings me down to maybe 60 a month or 720,000 a year. So we've called every landlord, every lender, trying to get cuts and reductions. Um, and then there's people and then there's, you know, stuff. And, and uh, so, so suddenly you're looking at a more manageable number and we've got good reserves, like I said. Um, but the biggest thing, having been through so many of this with people before, is just not to, you just, it, it never looks as bad in hindsight as it does in the moment. It's always more terrifying, always more scary in the moment than it looks like two years later. Two or three years later, you'd be like, oh, I should have bought more stuff. And I'm not suggesting you buy now. If you're a stock guy, you might buy stocks now. I'm not really a stock guy, although they're looking tempting. I mean, Boeing <laughs> is now like 90 bucks and it was 400 like a year ago. Like, like, like four weeks ago, it was 320. Like, yeah, I know, dude. I can't believe I missed that short trade. I, I just, know. I would have made Gosh. a million bucks. I'd have probably I put know. 100 into it. <laughs> But anyway, regardless, um, that's just gambling money. I still don't even care that much about that. I'm, I'm not a stock guy. So what am I looking I, for? I'm looking for real estate. I'm going to look, I think all prices are down. Uh, we have a fund that has uh, four or 500 single family homes. We're going to buy another. We're in the in middle of deploying 37 million bucks. And I'm super grateful that we haven't got it all deployed because prices are instantly better. And uh, these builders we were talking to on build to rent were kind of like, yeah, yeah, but we're so busy. They were brushing us off. They've all been calling us again and we're not going to move fast. We're going to be like, yeah, yeah, everything just shifted. So yeah, if you, that deal that we offered, the, we offered a, a, a month ago or 10 days ago, it's now down and we've got to completely reanalyze everything and see where we're at. Uh, long run, I think we'll, we'll come out of this and we'll come out of it strong. It's just a matter of when. Um, and whether that's one year, two years, three years, or six months, I don't have an answer. I suspect it'll be longer than everybody thinks. And I suspect um, it won't be crazy long. So what do you, what do you for instance, your real estate companies, uh, are people working remotely? What have you guys done to adapt in that way? Well, we bought some Zoom stock just for fun. We missed the big jump on it, but we bought some because everyone's doing Zoom. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a great partner and CEO and Smokey Garrett, and he's working his tail off. And I've been privy to some of the calls of, you know, fear and desperation that he's having to take. And obviously we're all taking a bunch of calls from people that are scared right now. Um, and, uh, it's the same coaching, like hammer down your expenses. This is a great time to get your business in order. This is a great time to get your, for instance, your, your database, correct, your marketing database, uh, We've been transitioning everyone to new technology. So this is a great time to do it. People are normally like, I'm so busy, I can't do it. People are working remotely, Rock, but I wouldn't be surprised if my revenue was down 70%, 80%. I have no idea at this point, because like I said, February closed and the March numbers, which would be February, looked great. But I expect there to be a massive drop off in March and April. I know people are still working. But in some states, they've said you can't work, right? So in New York, you're shut down no matter what. Nobody's allowed right. to leave the house. That's, and is that coming everywhere? I don't know. But the good thing is uh, banks are willing to work with you. Uh, the government's stepping up big time with a lot of money. Um, so the thing is to be patient. Like uh, one of my favorite shows as a kid was uh, Kung Fu. And the, the, the wise elder always said to the young Kung Fu, patience, grasshopper, patience. <laughs> I feel like this is the time for patience, awareness. Yeah. Uh, I'm working on my 10 year plan. I'm working on my 10 year vision. It's, it, it's, it's helpful for me to think 10 years in the future. And it was kind of in the back of my mind, but I didn't have time for it. Now, all of a sudden I have more time because I'm kind of stuck at home. I realize rock how many face to faces I do on a daily basis. Like my whole career had become mainly face to faces because I've gotten a lot of time back. I have phone calls and zoom calls, but I'm not having to drive anywhere. So I'm spending that time thinking where, where do I want to be in 10 years, 10 years, I'll be 62 years old. Uh, it'll be the year 2030. And that gives me a lot of perspective to know that the odds are very high that we're, we're doing pretty good as a nation in 2030, like we normally do. Um, I'm not watching too much news. I'm still kind of spinning through some websites. I like to go through to see the body count and see what's coming next. 
Uh, there's some rumors about martial law and all that going around, um, or me really more like just confining everyone to their home. But I trust that they're doing it for good reasons. I don't have any paranoid idea that they're out to get us or any of that. I, I'm, from what I've read, this is bad stuff, this coronavirus. And, and yeah, it's not for eight out of 10, but if two out of 10 people get really sick in America, that's 60 million people. And we've got what, 700,000 beds. You just can't do it, man. You'll be, it'll look like, it'll look like a refugee camp. People be dying <laughs> in tents. You know? yeah. so that's what, that's why they're shutting us down. Not because it's the worst thing ever, but because they don't want to overwhelm the healthcare system and have people literally like Italy dying in the hallways. So that's really the problem with this thing. You know, part of me is like, I've had this lingering cold since Aspen. When I saw you, I couldn't even have a glass of wine with you. I opened a delicious bottle for you and I had a share and then I couldn't drink it. <laughs> And actually that one's still sitting downtown, wasted downstairs, it's like a $300 bottle of wine that break my heart. But uh, I've still had this lingering cold and a part of me wishes it was the coronavirus. I'd love to be over it already, but I have no idea. So I've tried to get tested, but they wouldn't send me the test kit um, for obvious reasons. They asked me, have you been to these five countries? Do you have, did you have a high fever? And uh, do you have- a you, don't, you don't fit the bill on any of those. Yeah, I don't fit the bill. So looking back, to this type of a, a situation that nobody could predict, but what could people have done differently? What do you think is giving people the most pain mentally, emotionally, or financially right now? Because obviously if you're living paycheck to paycheck, you're in a little bit of a pickle right now. Yeah. If you're, so what could they have done is manage their, you know, you have to have savings and everybody can have savings. I don't, you know, um, in, in the police department where my father-in-law worked, uh, you know, there'd be 50 cops all earning the same amount of money and five of them would have pretty decent savings and 45 wouldn't. Right. And why is that? What were the five doing that the 45 weren't? And most of them would be working overtime, saving extra cash. You know, we, we both know a guy, David Green, who's just crushed it. He was a cop, right? And now he's a multi, multi-millionaire. You have to live your day-to-day -day life early sticking away some acorns for a rainy day. That's just like, and I've told, I remember coaching a guy from college this once. I was like, you have to save money. And he goes, oh, and then after I've saved all year, can I buy a new stereo? I'm like, no, 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 you never get to spend that money. He goes, well, what if I, you saved it up and put, bought a new car? I'm like, no, no, you, you don't get it, Wes. You never get to spend that money because money has gravity to it. The more you have, the more you get. Now you can invest it in cash flowing assets, but it's never ever play money. So. And people can save money on lower incomes. I mean, you know, people do it all the time. In our book, A Wealth Can't Wait, we talked about a janitor who died and donated $8 million at his death, right? And all he'd been his entire life is a janitor. Now, I'm not suggesting you have to live like a janitor. I'm just saying whatever you do, you have to build capital. It's called capitalism for a reason, um, you know, and it's too late to tell people that there so now, so I don't want to be harping on it. But A, you have to build capital, and B, you have to um, build cash flowing assets with that capital. And so, what could you do right now? You could look across your board. You know, can you cut the cord on cable? Can you stop drinking, you know, five dollar lattes? And I don't. Again, my whole philosophy is not to be cheap, but there is definitely a time to be cheap. And the time to be cheap is when you're building, because that capital, you've got to think of it as like the freedom train, right? That you got 10 grand saved up, you're that much closer to freedom. You got 20 grand saved up, suddenly you've got enough to down pay on a blue collar housing that could pay you $200 a month for the rest of your life. Um, that's the way you have to start the game is defense, like accumulating capital and then learn how to play offense strategically and then take advantage of the big runs like we just had from 2008 until 2020. And there will be another big run. There's about to be one. So you know, live below your means, save capital, be wise, educate the heck out of yourself. Um, do the stuff that you teach rock all the time, which, you know, I'm, you and I share one undying philosophy is that your life, your destiny is based on your personality, your identity. And the only way to change the outside world is to make the commitment to change the identity that you carry with you. And it's not easy because the identity you carry is like really ingrained in you. And then once you've made that decision to change, the best way to change is from the outside in, not the inside out. Everyone thinks like, look at the man in the mirror and change. That's bullshit. That's not true. What you got to do is you make the decision to change. And then how you change from the outside in is you get coaches, you get a better peer group, you set your goals, you set your vision, and you start hanging out with people 
where being excellent is normal. And then all of a sudden you'll change from the outside in. And my best example of that is I was a dorky Dungeons and Dragons playing kid, not really into athletics of any sort and not really into working out that much. I mean, I didn't not work out, but I was just skinny by nature. But today I'm like a workout. The, the, the one thing I'm doing now is working out all the time. I finally have a house with a gym. I've only lived here a year and it's not a big gym. It's just a Peloton and a bunch of you know, weights and a kettlebell but I'm working out a ton and I'm loving it. And I'm so grateful that I have that space in my house. Um, and it's because I hang out with people like you and people like Tim road and people like, you know, Mike McCarthy, the outdoor people that just want to work out all the time. The whole ethos we created around always moving your body and always doing something physical has really gotten into me. My identity is different. I'm not the man that used to want to play dungeons and dragons all night or video games all night. I'm now the man that like, wants to exercise for an hour uh, every single day at least, or go skiing or go play volleyball, which of course all that's been shut down now as well. Um, and so that's an example of like changing from the outside in. The decision was there. My decision was to have lower body fat, better health. When I made that decision, I was a buck 65 and I think I was 221 on my cholesterol. And today I'm a buck, I'm, I'm, tw I'm 17 years older and I'm a buck 55, 10 pounds lighter. I'm like 9% body fat down from probably 25. And uh, my, my cholesterol is 175 without any drugs. I'm not taking statins. I'm not taking you know, anything un other than eating better and paying attention to my health. Uh, it's still not great, 175, but it's way better than 221. At, you know, at 35, I was at 221. At 52, I'm at 175 and I've got a ways to go. So all of that is changing your identity from the outside in. You're a big proponent of that. And, and now's the time to change your identity. And the best way to do it is to know that the downtime is the best time for you. It really is, man. Every, I was telling someone the other day, the crash of 08 got me so focused on running my businesses better. The crash of uh, my personal identity crisis, which was uh, when I turned 31, so, so 1998, when I got shingles from stress and I was going to therapy and I wanted to quit everything so bad and I was just broken down was the best thing that ever happened to me as a businessman. Because of that breakdown, I reset my identity and came out a new person that has created massive financial success. When my father got sick and died of cancer, when he went from a man who could have kicked my butt and told me so often, by the way, at age uh, 75, to where by 76, 77, I was changing his diapers and he couldn't get out of bed, like changing my dad's diapers. Imagine that. Um, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. If that hadn't happened, my ambition was out of control, I think, at that point. Like I'd switched to this businessman and I just wanted to make money and I was just putting family off and off and off. And because my dad died, which I, by the way, I loved him. He was a bit of an ass, but he was my, my dad and very loving, even if he was a bit abusive at times but he was my dad. I'd love to have him around today to talk to him about this stuff, but he died of cancer. It wasn't to be. And I turned to my girlfriend and said, Hey, let's have some family. Let's start a family while going through that death. And because of that, I have my beautiful daughter, Bella, my beautiful wife, Tracy, and my beautiful son, Luke, because of my dad dying. So every bad thing that ever happens to you, if you'll let it will become the best thing that it'll become part of your story that is the future. And if you think this has never happened before, it has. You know who, who knows about it? My mom, my 85-year-old mom says this is just like World War II. She said in World War II, we had rations. We had to stay home. We had to sleep under the table, which was reinforced in case they got a bomb on their head. And they didn't get to have a job or go buy stuff. They were just given a coupon book to buy, so everyone got a little bit of butter and a little bit of jam and a little bit of bread, and that's what they got. And that lasted for England for multiple four or five years. So it has happened before. It's just been a really, really long time. And I think in the long run, we'll all be stronger, better, wiser for it if we pay attention to the lessons and really reap from what this is trying to sow within us. So... So we're right now all kind of not, we're all in a, in a holding pattern. Yeah. And we're going to spend less and we're going to do less and there's going to be less revenue, which means people are going to have to hold back. What do you think are going to be some of the indicators that we're going to be able to now come out of this? Is it literally going to be people in the street or is there going to be an indicator before that? Do you think? I think it's when they open up the schools and the restaurants again, that'll be a sign that they feel like they're on top of it. Um, but 
I mean, it's a great time to like, what is, what is one of the things you have to do to be successful, you know, face hard times and do the hard things, you know? So right now is a great time to call your bank, ask them for a break, call the SBAs doing emergency loans for small business people. Um, I just got a text on it. I can't remember where you go, but they'll loan you up to 2 million bucks at 3.75. Somebody posts about it in one other group I'm in. Um, it, make those hard decisions, start working out harder, use the, use the energy to work out your body, be ready because the economy is going to come back. And when it does, there's going to be opportunities galore. And most people like are paralyzed, you know, they, they get stuck in a funk and, and we all get stuck in a funk, but the sooner and quicker you get out of that, um, you just get, you, you, that's what you learn. And that's where I'm lucky to have a mentor in Gary Keller. Cause Gary Keller was on like almost right away saying, Hey, this is some steps you need to do. Um, go call your landlords, call your banks and do that. So we did it right away. And it, it feels empowering just to have had those conversations. And I was shocked at how receptive they all are. They all know what's going on. They're like, yeah, yeah, we'll work with you. I know I called a buddy of mine who has a trucking company with 300 trucks. He's already called the banks and talked to them. And they're like, he said, I might have to go interest only. Um, I have another buddy who has a furniture, he, he, his son has a furniture business. He's like a multi, multi worth about 800 million bucks. The wealthiest guy that I actually have a direct phone call conversation with on a regular basis. And his son's business was selling $30 million worth of furniture a month in Dallas. And they just said, stop, we don't want any. So imagine that. And you know what his dad's advice to him was don't pay your rent go to every bank, go to every warehouse owner and just say, I'm not paying you. I've got no revenue. I'm not paying you. I will pay you. I want to pay you on the back of my mortgage, but right now I'm not paying you. And that's, I just don't have a choice in the matter. And then that landlord has to go to his bank and say, I'm not paying you. And that's what's yeah. going to have to happen here. But the sooner you take action, the better you'll feel and the stronger you'll be coming out of it. Yeah. Great advice. Thank you for that. I guess the tide sinks all ships in this case, right? Everybody's going to have to flex. You're going to bring a little bit less in and you're going to pay a little bit less out and then it'll come back. It's what literally you... wartime, Brock. Yeah. It's like a war. It's like, yeah. it's like a war. That's no dramatics. So not that you have a crystal ball, but what do you think? Do you think that when we go through this, there will be a change in the way that, you know, we interact? Are there going to be more plexiglass panels when we go to pick up our coffee? Um, is the health industry going to change? Because you remember HIV, when it came out, I remember it was in the 80s, Rock Hudson and all that. It was freaky. It was yeah. scary. Yeah. And it, you thought, oh my God, I don't know if I want to, you know, be intimate with anybody without knowing what their blood tests, right? Yeah. And now, you know, today, when you're a dorky nerd like me, it wasn't as scary because you were still <laughs> mostly hopeful. But, you know, cool study, studly guys like you must have been terrified. <laughs> so, so we, now we don't talk about HIV. People die from it. People carry it. Yeah. And yeah. it's become just this thing in the past. And at the beginning of today's episode, I talked about smallpox, Ebola, rabies, HIV, hantavirus, influenza, dengue, rotavirus, and MERS. They're all out there still. They all kill people at rates greater or less than, than the one we're talking about. So my question to you is, do you think it's going to have a global shift on us, how we operate? We'll have sanitizers everywhere all the time. Or I mean, yeah, I think, I, think? Think to some, I think it'll take a people a long time to rebehave like they were. I mean, this, it's like I'm walking with five other families or four other families through my hood and this guy's jogging and he's coming at us. And there's this, like this little bit of like, <laughs> hey, where's the six foot roll? Like it's not just passing someone. Now it's the six foot roll. <laughs> Um, I think it's going to take time for people to get comfortable in each other's space again, because we're learning something that has, it's happened before. It's just been a really long time. Like the, I guess the Spanish flu or whatever would have been the last pandemic of this level that would have killed this many people. And you're learning, wow, people are kind of germy. Like when germs show up, they go hard. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see what happens to the restaurant business, the travel business. I don't think it's bad for us to be more virtual. Like the pollution is cleaned up all over the world right now. And uh, I almost wonder if we should have a one month off every year just to put things in perspective and let the planet heal. Um, but for that month, we'd have to have no rent, no mortgage payments, no nothing. So I'm not smart enough to figure that whole thing out. But yeah, I think people will change and maybe for the better. Maybe we come out of it with, a, I mean, I've been playing with my kids rock more than ever before. And 
kind of enjoying it and just getting yeah. into it. It's not, it's not easy, but it's, it's definitely like really rewarding. And I feel like we're really deepening and this will be something we remember for a lifetime. My daughter, for sure, my 10 year old will be like, oh yeah, I remember when we were just shut in the house and just had to play together forever. So yeah, I think behaviors will change. I think behaviors have been changing all the time anyway. I don't know about you, but it seems to me like we were a little crazy and the younger people today seem more sane. I, I guess you see the spring breakers and the people coughing on vegetables or whatever being stupid. That's more like how everyone was when we were kids. And it just seems like when I see young people today, they're a little more cautious, but they're a little more aware. They're a little more considerate, uh, conscientious. And I think this will continue through society. And I don't think it's a bad thing. We're getting really crowded on the planet. And the more people are aware of these kind of risks, the better. Um, I do think we'll come out of this stronger. People will come out more prudent. They'll be like, you know, I need to save some money. I need to have reserves. Hopefully they'll make better decisions. Um, yeah, I think it changes behavior for sure. But I think most things do. Yeah. Listen, um, you got a family to get to. I got a family to get to. We spent a lot of time with a lot of people here today and I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, what are just some final words you would have for people that, that are help them get through this strong and come through really stronger? Yeah, sure. I saw Cliff Rigo had raised his hand, by the way, and I don't know how to make that happen, but Cliff's a good buddy of mine. So I'd love to hear what his question was. But let me um, see if I see it here. I did not see He that. raised his hand, but I don't know what that means. So, I mean, yeah, the last thoughts are just this too shall pass. I mean, that's what, that's why, you know, like the first time a girl breaks up with you or a guy or whatever, it breaks your heart, man. You are devastated and it, and it hurts. And the second time it hurts, but not as bad. And then, you know, being 52 and having been through all these crises before, I can't even remember the name that broke my, of the girl that broke my heart back in high school. You know, I just remember the pain of the breakup and that's what it'll be like. Like the great thing about having been through multiple downturns, you know, this too shall pass. And no matter what happens, whether you had to file bankruptcy or your credit gets wrecked, there's still always a way forward. There's a way through. And, and the, the great news is everything was overheated. The market was too hot. Uh, real estate was overpriced. We were all just like trying to manufacture opportunity out of nothing. And all of that is changing now. Like it's going to be a good buyer's market again. It's going to be a good healthy market. Um, we've been trying to hire somebody for months and we were getting no calls. We had four calls this week of people looking for work in real estate, open door and all these models were showing up just to buy homes. They're all shut down. This doesn't work. Like they can't, that thing only works in a booming market. There's going to be so many opportunities that come from this. People are going to need new skills. Virtual is going to be much bigger. You're not going to have to have as many face to faces. Um, it, it's, there's going to be so much good that comes out of it. And the good for right now is work on your foundation. This is a, the, the, the world, the, you know, the, the universe, God, whatever your faith is, has given you this window to work on yourself, work on your foundation, work on your family, work on your 10 year vision. And, and people just don't take the time to do that. And it's probably the most productive thing you could do with your life is ask yourself, am I on track with everything? Where am I off track? What could I do to improve that? Where would I like my life to go? What would I, maybe you get laid off from a job that you hated. Um, and that's what a blessing you just were keeping that job because it was paying the bills. Now you've got this opportunity to start over and look at everything's fresh. And that's what I would take this as I would take this as a, a winter that you know, there's going to be a spring. And you're just taking this opportunity to really try to get clarity around how you want your life to be going forward. I think it's a great opportunity. And if people will just use it, know this too shall pass. Yeah, I'm scared. But again, this is like my third crash and my second war. I know this too shall pass. I'm not that terrified. No matter what happens, I know that even if I can't make my mortgage payment, even if I can't, ha you know, if I have to let off people go that I really love, if I, if I, if my revenue goes negative, like hundreds of thousands a month, I know what it looks like. And it's never forever. It's just a period yeah. of time. And then when it comes out of it, it's like when the spring finally shows up, there is so much fertility and, and opportunity that's going to show up. It's going to be like nothing you've ever seen. It's going to actually be way better. The thing that's feared me every single day we've been in this boom market is I know every day we're in a boom, we're one day closer to a crash. So the, when the crash finally comes, whatever the cause is, it's like, hallelujah, finally, because yeah. that means we're going to have like a seven or spring 10 again. year spring. Yeah. yeah it always yeah. goes for seven to 10 years. We just had a huge one and maybe they've changed the cycle. 
Right. But once we stabilize this in a, in a, in a year or so, you know, whatever it takes, six months, a year, year and a half, there's going to be like a seven year upward run. And it's the opportunity then to really make hay while the sun shines. And that's what I love about it. I mean, it hurts now and I'm not thrilled and I'm scared like everyone else, but I also know finally it's reset and it has to reset. It's like someone has to turn the computer off and reboot it every now and then for it to create the most opportunity. Let, yeah, awesome. Let's see, is Cliff there? Hi, I'm here, can you guys hear me? Yeah, hey, go ahead. Hey, baby, Brock, how are you guys? Hey, great, Cliff. great. Good to go hear ahead, you, man. Go ahead, guys. Listen, great stuff. I, I, I thank Rock. I want to thank you. I mean, what you've done is great, great timing. Dave, you hopping on and always being open, it's, it's just uh, incredible. I think we're on this, you know, uh, a level that, you know, with our team, our, our brokerages and our offices, I think we're always about people, and I'm, I'm hanging in there with the people as well. Some of the questions, one of the questions I had, and I know your, your major overhead would be staff salaries. We're looking at a different outlook at, the people last, would you consider, and we're considering this, a hey, two part question. One, would you bring the entire team in and say, hey guys, instead of this layoff, we know what's happening. We might run a zero month of sales, um, a reduction, a deferred payment, like the banks are working with us. I'm coming up with this deferred program with the staff. And then we come back out of it, we hit targets. I'll, re I'll uh, reimburse that and bonus and some, that's one option. And two, would you go with, the big C's in your company, the, the, the leaders or the, and who do you cut first, right? Well, I mean, the answer to that is it's not going to be popular, but you have to be aggressive and fast, just like with rent. So, so one option is to call everyone, pull them together and say, look, you know, we're going to not make any money probably for the next 90 days. If you want to stay on, here's my critical people. If you want to stay on, you're at half salary or, at a, you know, a lot of our structures are massively bonus incentivized based on profits. So the base yeah. is actually pretty low. So that's why we're okay in some cases. But um, you, you either say, uh, can you work for 50% for this month and we'll make another decision next month? Can you, uh, can you, can we all take one month personal unpaid leave? You know, I, I, you could go to eight people. Like one guy I talked to the, also who has an acquisitions company, his payroll is 500,000 a month. He has 200,000 going towards acquisitions guys. Now this is a big, big company, like a hundred million dollar concern. And he said to me, like, I love all these guys. They're rock stars, but the, the bid process we go through, which is highly complex is shut down. There's nothing going on. I can't lose half a million a month for very long. Like my reserves are like a million bucks. So I don't have that. So, so what he thinks he's going to do is go to them and say, look, you either take a month unpaid leave, or you can, I can let you go. You can immediately apply for unemployment and you can just know that you will have a job waiting for you as soon as we get this thing up and running. Um, and then the third option is to, as you said, have them take a, a pay cut, like a significant pay cut. But here's the thing you have to know, Cliff, and I know you, and I know you're a big personality and you've got a lot going on. You, you got to cut quickly in a downturn. You have to cut as quickly as you can, as painful it is. And try, and I know you love your people and we love our people too. And you want to be face to face and direct with them and talk to them and just be honest. Look, I, I've went, I know I was making a hundred grand last month. It looks like I'm going to lose 400 grand this month or whatever your numbers are. There, I don't have an option. And here's the thing, the stronger you make yourself, Cliff, the sooner you make yourself stronger, the more you'll be around to come out of this and hire people back and put people back to work. And if you try to be, and there, are, you always hear the story of that old guy that owned a factory that never laid off a person. And I admire that. And I love those kind of people. And if you have the capital and if you have like $10 million sitting in an account, that's great. That's an awesome thing to do. But the reality of it, most of us are running almost month to month on our ability to pay our, our bills. You know, I, I have 90 days reserves in most of my businesses, which is just a discipline we have. But if you don't have that, the sooner you get right size, the better. And it's got to be hard, just like the rent and everything else. And it could be open and transparent, but you have to do it quickly because you have to survive. And if you, if you feed 20 people because you're a good hearted person and then you go bankrupt and when the market comes back, you aren't in a position to take space or get back into business, you can't hire those 20 people back. You've got so much problems you create for yourself. So if you're under a heavy nut or a heavy load and you don't have a lot of bandwidth to cover that load, 
It's just like calling the banks and the rent. You have to be honest, transparent, and have those conversations as quickly as possible. And maybe just give them their options. Do you want 30 days layoff, uh, you know, personal time off? Do you want to go for unemployment and have a job waiting for you? Or are you willing to take a 50% pay cut? And Cliff, you have to do it, man. And I know it's hard and I know how much you love people. It just has to happen sooner rather than later. Yeah, thanks, guys. We've acted quick, did what you did, all the banks, everyone's on board. The beauty is everyone's in together and everyone's been positive and open. It's, uh, we're all in it together and it's been uh, pretty incredible, especially with what you guys are doing. So thanks yeah, again, great. boys. I'm glad to hear you're on top of it, Cliff. Thanks. Good to hear from you, Cliff. You too, Rock. Thanks. You got all two right, more, buddy. Rock. Do you want to get them or do you want to just call it? I don't mind either way. I don't know how. Are they hand raises or questions? Yeah, hand raise I saw. Two hand raises. Yeah, I don't know I'm, I'm happy to do a couple of hand raises. Um, my team should be setting them up. So, Ramu, maybe? Who's, who's up next, Annette? Uh, Velo's here. His hand is raised. Okay. Velo? Can you speak, buddy? If you can, uh, here's go ahead. his question. It says, I, I'd like to set up a time with him. Can I have his contact? So oh, that's that's for a previous call. Oh, that was I, a I've got one call. here from Phil uh, Caprone. He says, David's point is that prices likely will decline in the coming months for real estate, but due to the quantitative easing, inflation will certainly rise. How does he factor that into purchasing decision? I think right now everyone's going to get hurt and it's going to, prices are going to go down. I mean, what, what I'm having on a microcosm is going on everywhere. I know a retail guy who's like almost every other tenant is calling me asking me for a break. Um, I yeah. know a retail guy who buys a bunch who said that all the people that he, tur that he lost out the bids to last month are calling him saying, hey, the first three guys didn't close. You were the fourth biggest bidder and everyone else hasn't closed. Are you still interested? And his answer has to be yes, but not at the price I bid last time, you know, so guys with cash are waiting. So yes, there will be, if, if they QE everything and they pour cash back in, there'll be another big boom, but it's not, you know, they poured all that cash in in 08. It didn't really take till 11, 2011. So right. I think you wait six to nine months if you're a real estate guy like me and you see what's going on. And, and if you own assets and you can sell them and you think you can get a quick buyer for them and make some money, you should sell them. If you got like a VRBO product, I don't think people are going to be VRBOing for the rest of this year, man. I don't, maybe at Christmas. So if you could, if you got a thing that was, you thought was worth 600, it's maybe worth 500 now, but you only have 350 in it might be a good time to take some chips off the table because you might yeah. be able to buy that thing at 400 in nine months. And again, there's a lot of speculation in this, but I just think people, it, the, the hope tends to die slowly. And I'm not, again, we are all should be hopeful. This whole message is about hope. The opportunities are going to be huge, but sellers take a while to get realistic and they're not going to be realistic right away in 60 yeah. days, 90 days. That's when I think prices are going to start getting interesting from a real estate point of view. And as rock and I talked about earlier, I love real estate because I can buy it and forget it. And yeah, I missed this huge boom in the stock market because I have nothing in the stock market, virtually nothing. But like I was meeting with some financial planners last week or, you know, during this week and they were like, wow, how much are you down? I'm like zero, I guess. I don't know. I just own a bunch <laughs> of real estate. I'm sure it's going to be down, but right at this moment, I have no drama. I don't feel like I'm down 50%. I haven't lost, you know, $25 trillion. Um, and I like real estate because it just pays me money. Now, will it pay me money now? Maybe not. Maybe there's going to be some problems, but in the long run, I think it'll all come back and we can work with the banks. The banks don't want the assets back. Um, and so I, and then you look to buy in, you know, towards the end of the year. Yeah. And because it's so global, it's, it's not it's just happening in Detroit because there's problem with the car companies. It's so global. Everybody's going to have to adjust. Yeah. So I think it's that every we're, country in the world, we're actually yeah. better off. I think yeah. most we're, of we're in it together. We're in it right? together. So yeah. All right, David, let's end on that. Thanks again. Always great hanging out with you and lots of great comments on your insights. Appreciate you, brother. Hey, love you, Barack. Great to be on with you and I wish everyone the best and just hang in there. This too shall pass.